just a little bit of something fun. I have this colorway. It's called Amphitrite. It's an artistic aisle. It's another one of the duochrome, but it's just got a little bit of a sheen. I don't know if you could see it in this lighting, but it's, there we go. It's got a little bit of an iridescent pinkish gold sheen to it. And I thought that would be fun to add to my stars as well. Now this is, this is sort of, it's a, it's a little bit translucent, so it works really well to just dot it on top of things like this. And maybe even add a little bit of it to my rabbit. Now I've angled my camera at about a 45 degree angle to my page. That way you can see what happens when I start to paint over what is this purpley gold sheen that I used with the Eclipse color before over the black watercolor ground. And I'm just adding some background texture. I'm using neutral tint. It's a Winsor Newton, I believe, with my size zero brush. And I'm just dry brushing to create a little bit of a, a modeled texture going here. It, it emulates a little bit what the granulation did up top of my page. But what happens is that when I paint on top of the mica surface that I had below, it, it sort of ends up looking matte on top of that glimmery stuff, which makes for a really cool effect, especially when you see this in light or move around the painting. It gives it sort of a, a different dimension altogether where you have this combination of shiny and matte stuff going on. And this is all a little bit abstract now at this point. These are the kinds of textures that I enjoy. And so it's the thing that I see when I look at blank spaces in my paintings and I want to fill them up with this kind of texture. Maybe for you, you have a different kind of texture and aesthetic and it's it's good to try to figure out what those are for yourself, what your own personal aesthetic is. When you see blank color, what do you want to fill it up with? For me, this is also, it's also kind of um, organic. It has the feel of wood or maybe the, the crevices of a morel mushroom. Reminds me of botanical things. And these curves, these curves remind me of a swirling of leaves in wind or the way live oak branches curve and grow. 
which are in their own way shaped by the wind <laughs> on a more long-term scale of things. Yeah, you can see that actually head on as well. Sometimes at certain angles of light, it doesn't really show up. While at others, it really pops. I'm going to go back to the white watercolor ground once again. And use it to brighten these areas a little bit more. letting my brush skip a little bit to create its own new textures as well. And I think I want my rabbit to glow a little bit more. So I'm doing, it's a little bit dry brush with this watercolor ground right now. It's definitely not at full gloppiness. And I don't want to get rid of those little fuzzy bits that I spent so much time on doing with the rabbit earlier. Although it's not the end of the world if I do, I can just repaint them. But I felt like a little bit more of a glow was needed. So that's why I'm going back now and sort of dry brushing this stuff in. Sometimes it's, it's hard to tell at that first stage if, if you do enough. Because it looks so bright against the black initially. The contrast of it. And you can't really tell until you get more stuff in there if it was the proper amount. Also, while I have it out, I'm going to dot in some more stars. 
and by it I mean the white watercolor ground. sort of spray of stars all around. And this white watercolor ground is not really fully opaque, so that's why I'm doing it with this right now, because then I can go over on top of these larger blobs that I'm making with my brush right now and do a little pinprick of really bright white in the center using a gel pen. And with those, with that hard edged white that's super bright, it, it will work nicely against this softer half opacity initial glow that I'm making. Now that I have that whiter glow, I'm going back in once again with the size zero and I can carve out from that white that I just added some more of these textury bits like I was doing earlier. Now, I love the way the white on the brush kind of skipped over some of the rough bits that I have here already, and some of the physical texture that has built up through the use of these layers of watercolor ground and, well, yeah, actually that's, that's the only thing here that's doing the physical texture. <laughs> the layers of watercolor ground that I have built up you know, I started off with the black watercolor ground and I did some clear and then I had some more with the rabbit and the glow initially. So it's not a lot of texture, but it definitely adds a little bit of tooth to the paper now. And that's that's what's happened when I had my dry brush of white just now. And it skimmed over some of that a little bit which then creates some visual texture. And out of that visual texture that it has begun to hint at, I now pull out some more intentful bits of my own brand of texture. So you see, it's a, it's a lot of back and forth like this. It's the physical texture playing off of, you know, previous, previous layers of it, and then me turning that into a, a visual element, and not only just a visual element, but sort of crafting it into my own vision of a visual textural element. And that turns what was very random strokes on the page into something that's more integrated with everything else that I've got going on here. 
and then there's the little bits of mica sparkling through as well. It just makes for a really, a really fun mixture of so many different light and textural elements that makes me happy. <laughs> Taking some more of this sparkly stuff and just going around the stars to give them that little bit of glowing pinkness. I decided last minute to do a little bit more textury goodness here at the end. So I've got this Winsor & Newton Liquid Indian Ink. And I will use a flat brush to apply some water initially in these areas down here. And then taking some of this Indian ink, just dotting it in a couple places. And then I drop water in as well to let the ink spread now. This is more granulation that's going to happen as I did in the early stages. But this is with black inky stuff instead of purple and green colors. And a little bit of it on this side as well. Not too much, just dropping a few bits of it with the brush and then adding water to let it run. And then just as I did with the granulating watercolor pigments at the top of the piece, I need to not touch this after I have it in a good place I like. And I do this by tilting my panel to let the ink run around and move. But once it's, once it's good, I stop touching it and I just let things dry and let the granulation and the evaporation of the water do its magic. <laughs> 